order. Thank you. Let's put our hands together. Let's rise to our feet for opening prayers. Amen. In Jesus, choir, please come to stage. By now, you guys should be on the stage setting yourself up. Amen. Shall we pray? I want you to just talk to yourself for a second and pray that Father, fill me up for this service. Open the windows of heaven. Lord, let this not just be another service. But Lord, connect me with your throne room. Connect me with your kingdom. Lord, let this be a transformation service. Let this be the beginning of a new era. The dawn of a new era in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let your power begin to flow and overshadow in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, oh God, Lord, I'm asking and praying that you will show up in a big way. Thank you, eternal Savior. We'll bless your name forever and ever. Thank you, Rock of Ages. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. I'll be praying now. Just one second. Shall we pray? Close your eyes. Father God, we commit to this service into your hands. Father, beyond our own imagination, beyond our wildest dreams, beyond what we can conceive, Father, move in our midst in Jesus' name. Lord, we invite your presence into our midst this morning. We ask, oh God, Lord, that, that you yourself would take over the service. Father, we've not come to meet with any man. We've not come to meet with any woman. But we've come to meet with you. Our God and our Father, we ask, Lord, that you will take preeminence in this place. Amen. Lord, we are aware that you are everywhere. But for you to make yourself known and seen, you need to reveal yourself. Father, reveal yourself today. Amen. And as we call upon you, please answer us. Amen. As we progress with this service, have your way. Father God, we cannot do anything by ourselves. But you can do all things. Back us up in everything that we're doing. Amen. For everyone serving, Father, equip us. Amen. Anoint us. Amen. Lead us in the way to go. Amen. At the end of today's service, let's have cause to glorify you. Amen. Everyone that will serve in one capacity or the other, anoint your children. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Are you ready for today's service? Hallelujah. All right, so I'm going to invite our Pastor Prince to lead us in praise worship this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, celebrate Jesus this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Can you just smile to your neighbor? Give him a smile offering. Give her a smile offering. You know, the, the more you smile, the younger you look. And the younger you just become. Come on, smile to somebody. Smile healing to somebody. Smile blessing to somebody. You can smile deliverance to somebody, you know? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Just lift your heart to oh, Jesus this morning. Tell him how beautiful he is, how wonderful he is. Just tell him how awesome he has been, how loving. He's incomparable. He's greater than the greatest. He's higher than the highest. He's bigger than the biggest. He's the almighty. Oh, just worship him. Tell him something wonderful. Magnify his name, magnify him. Lift your hands, lift your heart to him this morning. From the pages of my heart, let my worship begin and never end to the God of all flesh. From the pages of my heart, 
let my worship begin and never end to the God of all flesh. He's my God and his name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh. Yahweh is my God and his name is Yahweh. His name is Yah Yahweh. bless your name you are my God you are God above every other one say you are my God there is no me without you Jesus you are my God we cannot bow before you Lord and bow before men no way no way we cannot bow before Yahweh and bow our heads in shame no way no way for you are my God hey, You are my God Lift your hands and tell him You are, you are, you are You are my God No one, no other God beside you Lord. Oh Jesus, you are my God One more time I'm saying this we cannot bow before Jesus and bow our heads to sickness. No way. No way. We cannot bow before the Lord and bow our heads in problem. No way. For you are my God. You are my God. You are, you are, you are. Jesus, we bless your name. Lord, we worship you.
just magnify him. Tell him how great he is. How wonderful. If not for the Lord. If not for the Lord. Celebrating with the club offering. Thank you, Jesus. You know the shouting side is the winning side. Are there winners in church this morning? Are you a winner? Now make some noise! Hallelujah! Somebody shout! Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes, oh God. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Hey, hey. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Jesus, I want to see you. Open the eyes, oh God. Open the eyes of my heart. Open my eyes, oh Yeah. 
have a big big God. A big big God. I have a big big God. I have a big big God. He makes me clap my hands. 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 He turns me around and around. He turns me around and around. He turns me around and around. I feel like Jumbo. I feel like Jumbo. I feel like Jumbo. I feel like Shout.
Kadosh, 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 He's the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. He alone, He alone is worthy.
Whatsoever it is that you may be passing through. Brethren, I want to assure you that the Lord has brought a solution already in the name of Jesus. No one of us will live here the same. In the name of Jesus, we have danced. We have clapped to the Almighty God. We have praised Him. He has descended in our midst and He is doing wonders already. Shout Majestically, hallelujah. You are welcome to church. Brethren, you are welcome to church. Levites, God bless you. As you were singing, I felt like Peter to say, let's build tents for Jesus, Elijah, and Moses. You know, it's like, let's remain here forever. Hallelujah. God bless you richly. Amen. Amen. The Lord has brought us here this morning. It's said to bless us. Our God is a faithful God. Look unto him. He says, those whose eyes are on him are never ashamed. We will not be disgraced in the name of Jesus. No matter the circumstances we are in right now, just have assurance in your heart that we will not be disgraced. Because our God will answer to his name. Amen. Is there anyone here who is fellowshipping with us for the very first time on a Sunday morning? If today is your first time here on the Sunday morning, please signify by raising up your hands so that we can pray with you, recognize you in a special way. Hallelujah. Anyone? Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be on your feet as brethren come around to welcome you. Hallelujah. Let's sing to you. Let's sing to you. to complete the, the um, form that you have been given with your full details and correct information, we would like to meet with you especially briefly after the meeting. Hallelujah. God bless you. The Lord that has brought you here, we meet you at your points of need in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's, um, is there anyone in our midst that we want to testify to the glory of God? the goodness of the Lord in his or her life. Is there anyone who wants to testify in our midst? Hallelujah. Please come forward. Come forward. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's clap. Let's clap to encourage her to come forward. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to testify to God's goodness. Amen. Today is my birthday. Woo. I'm 40 today. Woo. I Congratulations. thank God for how far he has brought me. I thank him for his grace, for his mercies, for everything he has done for me, Amen. everything he has given me. Amen. I'm so full of gratitude for that he called the glory. Hallelujah. I thank him for the journey ahead. Amen. Thank him for the months ahead, the years Amen. ahead, the decades Amen. ahead. Thank him because he will not leave me, Amen. he will not forsake me. Amen. I just want to appreciate God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I just, uh, <laughs> I would really like to appreciate God this morning. Um, last year, I gave a testimony about uh, me wanting to leave my shift and, you know, uh, come back to the daytime because uh, I made a choice. I was in and out, you know, overnight, day, overnight. Um, but it got to a point where I, I, I knew I couldn't continue with the overnight shift, so I was asking God to bring me back to the daytime. And he opened the way last year, so I came back. And it, it, was, so it was a contract. So, and they said it w at some point it was going to be over in April. Um, before April, it was extended till July. And my supervisor said to me, oh, we're going to have to reshuffle again. And everybody goes back. And I said to her, I ain't going back to the overnight shift. 
And anytime anything came up, I would simply say, I ain't going back to the overnight shift. So, <laughs> so um, sometime earlier this year, I got a clinical position. I was, you know, I had put in for a clinical position somewhere else. I also worked there. And um, the, the interview process started. And I went through the first interview. The second interview, they were trying to sell me the position. And they said, okay, give us your references. Speak to this person. Speak to that person. They'll tell you how great it is to work on this team. And I'm like, okay. But they were going to offer me something, you know, qu really less than what I currently make. And, um, but I wasn't going to be bothered with that. I really wanted that position simply because of the clinical, you know, part of it. And, um, but then they called me for a third interview. And between that second and third interview, my heart just left that position. I I just, I didn't know why, but my heart left. And because my heart left, I called them and I said, uh, you know what, people, I'm done. I, I, I'm no longer interested. And um, I didn't know God had something else in plan for me. But I kept praying and I kept trusting God. And then um, I, I wanted to do something one day and nothing worked. Everything just went. And I said, you know what, I'm done. I'm not fighting this. I'm going to work. So I showed up at work. And as soon as I pulled into the driveway, the ED was out there. And as I ran past her, she came back. She said, I understand you don't want to go back to the um, overnight shift. This position is coming over, uh, gonna come open. Put your name in the hat. I was like, oh, okay. And I did, and the process started. And I want to thank God you offered me the position on Friday. Hallelujah. Congratulations, sister. More money. More money. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. The Lord is blessing us abundantly in the house. Amen. Let's point our hands towards these our sisters who have come forth to give these testimonies and ask that the Almighty God will preserve these testimonies. That which is causing us joy now will not turn to sorrow. In the name of Jesus, let's soak the testimonies in the blood of Jesus. Our sister who is celebrating her birthday, that the Almighty God will go ahead of her into the new year. In the name of Jesus, the Almighty God, we grant her long life. There will be no infant of days in our midst. In the name of Jesus, as the days of a tree, so shall be your years. In the name of Jesus, the Almighty God, we fulfill the desires of your heart even in this new year. Our sister, the Lord, we grant you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to excel. This will be the lowest in, in, your, in your career, higher and higher grounds. In the name of Jesus, the Almighty God will grant you favor in the sight of all that you are working with, and he will grant you opportunities in the name of Jesus. Brethren, let's use them as points of contact, even for our own testimonies, for great jobs in the marketplace, for us to also live our lives. Our lives will be done like, the life, the, like the life of a tree, long life we will not die before our time there will be no infant of days in our midst nothing will cut short our lives nothing will cut short our lives nothing will deprive us of our years on earth in the name of jesus thank you almighty god blessed be your holy name forevermore in jesus name we have prayed thank you almighty god for all of these testimonies we soak them in the blood of jesus but I preserve the testimonies and make their joy full in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Congratulations, sisters. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's clap to the Almighty God as we encourage them. Amen. The Lord is doing mighty things in our means. If we are getting jobs, our God is faithful. To him alone be all the glory, all the honor and adoration in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We do not have announcements coming from the technical unit, no, but we are familiar with our requirements in the house. Hallelujah. This week, Biazo starts a time for us to pray for the coming month. And fasting and praying will start on Wednesday. Brethren, let's be part of this program. You know, on Wednesday, we will meet at 7 p.m. to pray together. On Thursday, we'll meet at 7 to pray together. On Friday, we'll meet at 7 to pray together, 7 p.m. And on Sunday, we will come together, you know, together for the Thanksgiving service. Hallelujah. 
thanking God ahead for the new month uh, that is coming and thanking God for how far he has helped us. Our God has been faithful to us. Please let's key into the you know, program for this week and the almighty God will bless our obedience in the name of Jesus. If there be other announcements, in, in, you know, that will be, and if there be other announcements, the pastor will make them known to us in the course of the service. I want to invite Mama to, you know, take the offering. Hallelujah. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is anyone ready to give this morning? Amen. If I can ask you, why do we give? Why do we give? Or why do you give when you come to church? Why do you give? Is somebody willing to answer that question? Hallelujah. To show your love. God doesn't spend money, does he? Does he need your money? But when he gives us, um, when he gives a command, it's a command to give, it's because in obeying that command, there are blessings attached to it. Hallelujah. I want to tell you a story that um, I remembered this weekend. You know, I was reading something and I came across that week um, story. It's not like I had not read it. How many of us have heard of Colgate before? Eh? Colgate, what, what's Colgate? Toothpaste, thank you. But the founder of that, what's um, known as Colgate Company, was William Colgate. And he was a Baptist man. He was, the, the skill he learned in life was soap making and candle making. And when he immigrated to the U.S., he made a covenant with God. He made a vow with him and said, God, I'm going to tithe everything I have. You know, when you're an immigrant, what do you have? Very little. So when he came on the ship to America, he had very little, but he had his skill of soap making and candle making. And then he said, I'm going to start making soap and candles in this U.S. And I promise you, for every income that comes in, I will tithe. And for every increase uh, I make, I will give of my income. And what do we have today? Hmm? He started Colgate Company in 1807, and we still have it today. William Colgate and Co., that was what it was called. You see, our God is a God who honors covenants. He honors God. It's, it's nothing to God to bless you, but he also wants to see the heart with which you approach his things. So when somebody as far back as that time made a commitment, made a decision that he would be tithing everything he had, God to honor his part of the, con um, of the covenant. Hallelujah. In uh, Malachi 3, 10, it says that, bring all the tithes into the house of the Lord. Back then, who were those, the tithes for? The Levites. It was not God who was eating the tithe. It was for the Levites. But he said, bring the tithes into the house. And test me herewith if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you forth a blessing more than you have room to contain. So we have an opportunity this morning to give. We have an opportunity for, to reach out to God for enlargement. Not because he's eating your money. Who are those who spend the money? We spend it. We pay for light. We pay for water. We pay for, we use the money to buy chair you are sitting on. Praise the Lord. So, but God gives that commandment. And in the place of obedience is where the blessing comes. And I am trusting that as somebody obeys this morning, the Lord will open you the windows of heaven and you pour out a blessing more than you have room to contain in the name of Jesus. And like the man called William Colgate, whose company still lives over 200 years after, your life too will continue to perpetuate the Lord's goodness in the name of Jesus. Let's rise to our feet this morning as we give. We have several ways of giving. If you are giving cash, there are envelopes. Please raise up your hand. The uh, uh, able ushers there will hand you an envelope so you can put in your offering. And if you are giving by Interact, which we recommend, um, we recommend seriously, the, um, the email is kcbpay, kcbpay at gmail.com, kcbpay at gmail.com. So that uh, we can do, we can send our offerings electronically. Hallelujah. God sees everything and he honors it. And if you're writing a check, do people still write checks these days? Yes, they still do. I know a few people who do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please write, when you write your check, a check, make it payable to King's Court, RCCG Brampton. Remember to sign it and date it. And the Lord honor you as you do so. Have we all received our envelopes? Have we all transferred? Are we still in the process? 
Respond to me now. And smile to me. Don't shrug your face. Eh? It's too early in the morning. Don't intimidate me. Hallelujah. Have we made our offerings already? Hallelujah. Let's raise up our hands. Let's raise up our hands to heaven. And I want you to pray this morning and say, Father, I give in obedience to your word. Father God, every blessing that you have attached to obedience. In Deuteronomy 28, he said that if you will hack into the voice of the Lord and you will obey, he said, blessed will you be. You will be blessed in the city, you will be blessed in the country. Blessed will be your needing troughs and in your storehouses. I want you to pray every blessing that attends obedience. Let it attend my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, everything that comes by standing in your word, by doing that which you have said, let it be manifest in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father God, we thank you. Thank you, Father God Almighty, for an opportunity to be blessed. Father, for an opportunity to give, Lord Almighty, we ask that every offering that has been given this morning will be accepted before you in the name of Jesus Christ. That every one of your children, Father, despite their circumstances, who made up their minds to give, I ask, Lord, in a miraculous way, you will meet with them at that point of their need in the name of Jesus Christ. You said that you will open, you said we should test you here with if you will not open the windows of heaven because you are a dependable and reliable God as we have given this morning, O oh God, for those who have given tithe, for those who have given an offering. Lord, let there be the opening of windows in the name of Jesus Christ. I can't hear your amen. Let your children be presented, Father God, with a blessing. Father God, that they, ha they will have not enough room to contain in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless the works of our hands. Bless the businesses that we do. Bless us at the places of our employment. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are asking, Father God, even the things, the things that we did not think we deserved. Lord, you will bring them our way in the name of Jesus. Your word says, if we be willing and obedient, then we shall eat the good of the land. As we walk in obedience, let us eat the good of this land. In the name of Jesus. I can hear only two amens. Father God, as your children answer amen, do unto them and more in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We ask, accept this offering. Make it good for the advancement of your kingdom. Lord, let it enlarge this church, this congregation of faith in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's give our offering rejoicing right now. Hallelujah.
thank you Jesus uh, wherever you are just lift up those voices uh, begin to bless the name of the Lord uh, uh, Father Lord I brought my worship unto you God uh, be thou exalted be thou exalted I'm so grateful I'm so grateful that you're in my life uh, Lord I appreciate you thank you Lord uh, blessed be your name blessed be your name oh God uh, in the name of Jesus thank you Lord uh, thank you for how far you brought us uh, thank you for what you're doing thank you for what you will do in the name of Jesus uh, thank you Heavenly Father we honor you Jesus uh, we honor you Jesus uh, blessed be your Holy Spirit uh, thank you for this day thank you for this new day thank you Lord for your presence in our midst uh, thank you God Lord for what you are doing uh, thank you God Lord for strength upon us uh, glory and honor and majesty be to your name of God uh, thank you Holy Spirit of God uh, thank you Lord Jesus uh, blessed be your name oh Lord uh, in Jesus uh, mighty name uh, we have worshipped uh, in Jesus mighty name we have worshipped uh, hallelujah brethren I just want to announce to you that we are officially in a new season in this church the new season of greatness the new season of lifting the new season of the supernatural last Friday when we were praying God led us to pray about sudden divine intervention you know we're in a season where God will suddenly intervene unexpectedly you didn't know it will happen now You've been praying, but all of a sudden, God comes through for you. This is that season. Tell your neighbor for me, this is that season of God's sudden intervention. You're about to start experiencing new things. You didn't know it will happen now, but it will be a season of joy, to be a season of happiness, to be a season of peace, it will be a season of promotion. Things are about to change for good. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Brother Francis, please come. <laughs> I uh, help me um, get some water uh, from my office. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now look at your neighbor. You're about to be blessed. Uh, and your life will never remain the same again. Uh, you're about to be lifted. Uh, and you are not about to come down. Uh. You are about to be promoted. Uh. You will never be demoted. Uh. In the name of Jesus. Uh. Praise the Lord. Uh. Now let's put our hands together for the Levites. Thank you. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now you may be seated majestically. Hallelujah. Praise God. We have a slight presentation today, and I'm going to tell you when to put it up. Let me just get started. Let me start by saying I want to welcome everyone who is here uh, today. Um, either today is your first time, or maybe you've been coming, and uh, you know, service is, is just regular for you. Listen, you're in an irregular service. Amen. You're in the service of the move of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And why do I say that? Last, uh, last week, we had the anointing service. Uh, and, 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 you know, when, the anointing, when we have an anointing service like that, uh, praise God. <laughs> Thank you so much. When we have an anointing service like that, uh, things happen in a new way. Amen. God begins to empower us. He begins to move. He begins to change you. So, you know, some of you already are experiencing it. You're feeling it. Hallelujah. Get ready to, to, to feel it some more. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, sudden uh, divine intervention. Hallelujah. Um, you had the announcements. Uh, um, here in King's Court, we have three days of prayer and fasting uh, on the eve of a new month. And when we do this, um, it's putting in the new month into the hands of God. And because this is really um, when the dawn of a new era, make sure that you pray fervently in this uh, particular Biazo. Amen. I have started seeing changes. I'm, I mean, I'm, it's just amazing. I, you, know, you know, when you've been praying, you've been praying, you know, it, just, it, 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 it reminds me of um, um, the day the church was praying for Peter. Praise God. Are you still here with me? 
Peter was in prison, right? They killed uh, James, and then they had arrested Peter. They were going to kill him. And then the church gathered together, and they were praying, they were praying, they were praying. You know, and then God answered the prayer. And God released Peter. Peter went to them where they were praying. And the person who opened the door just closed the door and ran away. Because <laughs> we were still praying for Peter to be released. And Peter was at the door. She couldn't believe it. So they said, who is at the door? They said, it's the ghost of Peter. <laughs> so what are you talking about? Is Peter, maybe it's Peter for real. Go and open the door and it turned to be Peter. So, you know, you, sometimes you are praying for something. You're not even sure when it's going to happen. And then you see it. You're, you, you're, you know, it surprises you. Amen. This is the season that we are in. Hallelujah. And, 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 and those things will begin to manifest. And I'm, we're going to say a short prayer at the end of the service and, you know, uh, 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 for that manifestation in Jesus' name. All I ask is, please, key into whatever we're doing in this church. Amen? Amen. These testimonies that we give time for testimonies every Sunday, it's not by accident. It's deliberate for you to know what's going on in the life of other people and that you are the next person in line in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Um, one of the key things that uh, God uses to accelerate his intervention in our lives is our service. Praise God. Um, there are some people here, you know, they shared some <laughs> testimonies with me, you know, and I, I'm just shaking my head. Why? Because they themselves are surprised at the new jobs they got. You know, one of them said to me, Pastor, I got this job. The lady told me, I don't know why I'm giving you this job. You're not qualified. You have no experience, but I'm giving it. I don't know why. I said, that can only be answered prayers. And you have to, those of you that are concerned, you have to come out and testify. <laughs> Amen. And that one shared another one with me. He said, they didn't ask for a resume. They didn't ask to prove that you can do the job. Say, are you sure you can do it? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, come. <laughs> and then they gave him the job. Perfect fit for him. Amen. Amen. And they're giving him overtime on top of that. Making, making extra money. Please see me with that, your overtime money. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. And God that can do it for one, he can do it for another. Your own is the next one. Amen. This is all answered prayers. Praise God. What do I ask for? When we call for prayer meetings, show up. That's all. Amen. Amen. Wednesdays, we have Bible study. So this week, because of Biazo, it's going to be all prayer, prayer, prayer. Amen. Amen. If I listen, listen. Can I just, can you allow me to be myself a little bit this morning? There's no reason why we should have more people on Sunday in church and not have equal number of people in Bible study on Wednesday. Why? Because the Wednesday Bible study is even online. You don't even have to travel. Wherever you are, open your phone, open your computer, open your TV, put the thing, link on like that, and you are part of the prayer, part of the study, and you can learn. That's what accelerates your promotion. That's what accelerates God, God's intervention in your life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, I'm challenging you this morning. Some of you get the messages you say like, okay, I'll join later. I'll, I... No. When it's time, click on it. Some of you forget. Let me tell you the answer to that forgetfulness. Put, a time, put um, uh, a, uh, something in your calendar. A lot. Because if I tell you now, I'm distributing $500 for everybody on a specific day. And I put the time. I guarantee you nobody will forget. In fact, before that time, there's a line up here. Amen. But what God has for you is more than 
$500. What is $500? Amen. Amen. So, Bible study time, put it on your phone. It must alert you. It's time to log in. Log in details, put it on that calendar. So that as soon as the alert comes up, click on it, you are in the, you are in the service. Amen. Amen. And then some of you, um, you mix up the link. Sometimes you think it's a WhatsApp prayer. You know WhatsApp has, you know, you can talk as a group in WhatsApp. No, we're still using Zoom. So you open WhatsApp, you see, you see the Zoom link. They are pressed the Zoom link. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we go into your word, speak to us this morning. We know you have started to move. Help us to catch up with your move. You led the children of Israel in the desert. And as the pillar of fire by day, a pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night was moving, they were moving with you. Father, help us to keep in pace with you in the name of Jesus. We will not run ahead of you. We will not run far behind. We will be in pace with you in the name of Jesus. And that's what you are doing, Lord. Let it manifest in all of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We we'll bless you forever and ever. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And everybody say a loud amen. amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So, uh, let's have this slide. Do you have it? Amen. All right. So, uh, by the special grace of God, I'll be uh, sharing a message titled... Uh, Walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. Walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. So last week we had the anointing uh, service. And many of us who were here, we were filled, you know, and we begin to uh, experience. Um, it was a special time in God's presence. That's all I can say. Amen. But if you were not here, it's okay. <laughs> because the Spirit of God is still here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. So, uh, as part of what we're doing today, we're going to continue uh, uh, understanding the purpose of that Holy Spirit in our lives. You, you, don't, you don't experience that special anointing as a one-time event only. But it is for you, for that Spirit of God to fill you and help you to walk with Him. Amen. To walk in the power of the Holy Spirit is not that you're going for an evening stroll. To the Bible, when the Bible talks about walking, it means that you are walking step by step with God. It means that you are, your life is all about uh, that service to God. Amen. When you are walking, it means how you, how you live your life. That's what the walking we're talking about. How you living your life going forward, especially with this new experience. Let me take this moment also to welcome everyone who is joining us uh, online, YouTube, Facebook, all our social media platforms. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you're in a special service, uh, and I know you will be blessed. Uh, you, the same anointing that is here will be with you where you are in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, all right. So, um, we're talking about walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to just speed up here. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, which we, 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 we read last week, uh, the Bible says, uh, 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 Jesus speaking before he left, uh, you know, he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be my witnesses uh, in Jerusalem. <laughs> Amen. And Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. Uh, he says, power is going to come upon you. This anointing, this Holy Spirit that is going, that, that I'm talking about, see, uh, um, Jesus, he, he, he was telling his disciples, he was about to leave. He says, hang on here in Jerusalem. I'm going to the Father. I, the, this Spirit, this messenger, this, this comforter, this helper is not going to come except I go to the Father. And as soon as I go to the Father, I'm going to plead with him. So that he will send the comforter. Are you still with me? So, Jesus, when he was here on earth, walking the surface of the earth, he was our comforter. He was the one teaching. He was the one guiding. He was the one healing. He was the one helping everyone. People
people who had serious issues, demon possession, they came to Jesus. Now he was leaving. He said, but I will not leave you comfortless. Just allow me to go. Is it okay if I go? Because if, if I go, it will profit you. Praise God. So he left. He said, but that thing, that promise, let me get there. You hang on here. And so Acts 1, 8 says he went and he was doing what? He hung, the, he, he let them uh, uh, hang there so that the power will come upon them. Now, here is the interesting thing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How important is this Holy Spirit in the life of the believer? How important? Is it something that we need? Is it something that we can do without? Is it something that is optional? My, my underlying message to you today is that you can almost not do anything without the help of the Holy Spirit. See, what Jesus was to all his disciples and those in his time is what the Holy Spirit is to us today. He teaches you. He will guide you. He will lead you. He will prompt you. How often have you ever had an experience where you're going somewhere and something will tell you, you will always say something said. You don't know what it is, that thing. It's the Holy Spirit that is, you know, especially, you know, if you're sensitive. I'm not talking of somebody who has had a little too much to drink and then uh, you now say something, something said. No, no, no. That's not what I'm talking about. You're in your right senses. You're prayerful. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. They, something tells you, go here, go here, stand there. And then you just do it. And then the outcome is, like, my God, I didn't know. You know, and, and, and there's a song that people will sing. They say, I never knew. You could favor me this way. I never knew. He will favor me this way. I never knew. He will favor me this way. Favor me this way. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The Holy Spirit will lead you. He guides you. Helps you to discern situations. He gives you wisdom. Jesus told his disciples, he said, these things that I've taught, taught you, all right, by the help of the Holy Spirit, you're going to teach other people as well. By the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, I like what Luke chapter 11 said. Um, Luke chapter 11 verse 13. It says, it says, and if you then, being evil, he was speaking to those uh, uh, Pharisees. He says, those of you, you already know. You are, you are evil in a way. <laughs> Amen. Yet you know how to give good gifts to your children. Your ch no child will come to you and say, I want a, 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 an egg. And then you will give a stone. Or you give a snake. He says, no. You know how to give good gifts to your children. He says, how much more? God. Luke eleven thirteen 13. says, how much more? Your heavenly father will give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Matthew chapter 7 says the same thing, but in Matthew 7, he says, your heavenly father will give good gift to you. So the Holy Spirit is a good gift. It's a good thing. Are you here with me? Because he knows how important that Holy Spirit is to you. Walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. Good things. It's a good thing. That's the Holy Spirit. Praise God now. May you receive it this time in Jesus' name. Amen. So I was talking about Jesus in John chapter 14, verse 16 to 17. John 14, verse 16 to 17. Jesus made a promise. How many of you know that when Jesus makes a promise, he never f it, it, it's impossible for Jesus to fail in his promise. He makes a promise, he fulfills it. John chapter 14, 16 to 17. He says, and I will ask the Father... And he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. That's the spirit of truth. Do you know what it means to have an advocate? Amen. If you have ever received, for me, 
The closest I've ever been to go to court and stand in front of a judge is to defend a, a ticket. Can't remember what the ticket, maybe a parking ticket or this or that. You stand in front of the judge. It was speeding. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> she knows I drive <laughs> fast and furious. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and then they gave me the ticket and I told the person, I'll see you in court. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and then you are standing in front of the judge. What's your, tell us your name, your address, this and that. You know, and then there's, there's a prosecutor standing there. He's the one standing on the side of the government prosecuting you for that ticket. <laughs> and for the most part, you don't have anybody. Amen. Amen. Except the Holy Spirit. So I go there in the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and I ask Jesus to be my advocate. Amen. They have their prosecutor. I too, I must have my defense. Praise God. And one of the laws is that if the, the officer that gave you the ticket is not in court, they strike out the case. I don't know if it's still happening. It's a long time I got ticket now. <laughs> Who said I there? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> So maybe they strike it out or not. I don't know. They, they do when the person is not there. I, a lot of... <laughs> they throw it out. So there's only one prayer. Father, give that person work to do. Must never show up in this court. <laughs> you know, he says, I'll send an advocate for you. May God be our advocate in the name of Jesus. So, the key thing here is that God knows how to give good gifts. And he knows that the best gift that you can ever get is the gift of the Holy Spirit. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you power. He'll give you discernment. He will lead you. Amen. Let's move on. Now, what is the purpose of this Holy Spirit? Very quickly, one of the most important things that Jesus was telling them when he was living in Acts 1.8, he says, until you'll be filled with power. So he will empower you. But the empowerment is not for show. It's just like, you know, oftentimes you see people who are bodybuilders. What do bodybuilders look like? They have a lot of muscles. The question is, what do you do with the muscle? God created our body so that when you are carrying something heavy, muscles will develop. But you see a, a bodybuilder having muscle. What are you carrying for God's sake? They will carry weight. To do what? Just to carry weight up and carry it down <laughs> so that the muscle will show up. Amen. God gives us that muscle, that power to do something. He told us in Acts 1, he says, so that you'll be what my witness is. See, the signs will follow you. Signs must follow you. Amen. I'm giving you this Holy Spirit so that you can be my witness. Who is a witness? Somebody who can testify of what God is doing. Amen. So if you've ever had trouble thinking, what do I say to somebody as a witness for Jesus? Amen. You are, all you need to do or remember is what has God ever done for you? Praise God. Has he helped you in one situation or the other? Have you prayed to God that he answered you? Has he opened a door that you thought was never going to be opened? You are a witness right there. Hallelujah. So he empowers you to be a witness. And, um, 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 you know, signs will follow it. Can you imagine you, 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 you are somebody that, um, let's just say, you had trouble in your office. God helped you to overcome the trouble. That wicked person that was trying to harass your life was removed. Amen. Amen. And then you now come to church. You give the testimony and other people will say, how did you do it? You understand? You begin to share what God did. 
guess what? You know, you can call the person that you are talking to and say, let me pray with you so that the same grace can be with you. That's a witness. And when that person prays with you, that same sign, that power can follow and transfer. Amen. Amen. Are you still with me this morning? God gives you that special grace. I remember Pastor Adesua was sharing about one lawyer that, you know, <laughs> that, you know, came, you know, it was a difficult situation was resolved. I kid into that anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're in the progress of some resolution. Amen. Amen. You came to the anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a grace to be a witness. That's why if you are, God is doing something in your life and you are sitting down there, you are not saying it. I pray. <laughs> if you want more, Sha, it's better you share. Are you following me? Because if you, you just, God does one thing for you, you keep quiet, you sit down on it. What do you think God is going to think? It's this one. I've been doing something for him, he doesn't even share it. Let me, let me go and take a break, Jerry. Amen. <laughs> but you do it. As soon as he's doing it, you're sharing. Ah! God said, that's my son. Let me give him another one. Let me see what he will do. You share another one. Ah! This is the man. Amen. Every Sunday like that, you'll be sharing two to five. You'll be begging pastor, please, can I just share three today? God is embarrassing me. Amen. Am I speaking to someone here today? So shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Now we're talking about still living in. So he empowers you, right? So we're, now we're also talking about, um, you know, walking. You got to also understand that to walk in the Holy Spirit, you need the, the help of God, you know, um, how do I say it? Uh, let's look at uh, Genesis 5.16. It will explain it very well for us. Gen uh, sorry, Galatians 5.16. Galatians 5.16. So, so I say to you, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Walk by the Spirit so that you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. What that means is that the, the flesh is always walking against the Spirit. So for you to walk by the Spirit, there is a contention of Spirit in you and flesh. So when you walk in the Holy Spirit, uh, God gives you the grace to overcome flesh. Amen. How many of you know that, you know, every time you want to do something good, the flesh will tell you that, ah, relax first. Are you with me? Have you ever tried to pray and all of a sudden sleep will come? And you now decide, okay, I'm not praying again, the sleep will go. It's flesh. I have a lot of, yes, sir, yes, sir, I have seen that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's just how the devil does it. You decide or you decide to fast, like we're going to fast on Wednesday. There are some days that you will not even remember to eat until 4 o'clock. Abby? Yes. Just say you want to fast today. By 9 a.m. in the morning, your stomach is, is telling you stories. Some are salty. Ah, hey, we are going to die. <laughs> eh? <laughs> It's the flesh. But when you walk in the spirit, you subdue the flesh. Say, get behind me, Satan. Amen. Amen. <laughs> One of my friends was, was sharing. He says, anytime. No, I think it was Miles Moro. He said, anytime you have that hunger pain, when you are fasting, it means it's time to go and pray. Use it as a signal. <laughs> ah, okay, it's prayer time. That's how you, you press the head of the devil down to leave, to leave your stomach alone. Amen. Depend on the spirit. Praise God. Then um, Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 23 also tells us about the fruit of the spirit. The one who is going to walk in the Holy Spirit is the one who is going to signify and show the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now, um, the Bible calls it the fruit. So it's not the fruits. Fruits mean there are many things, but it's the fruit, meaning 
the, the, it's one spirit, but manifested in so many ways. Amen. So Galatians chapter um, 5, 22 to 23 tells us about joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, faith. These are things that will begin to flow from your life. I like faith. You know, I thought about faith. <laughs> you understand? What about love? You know, when you're walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, love comes from you. No bitterness, no envy, no anger. Are you with me? People will see you that, ah, ah, this is an example of a child of God. Amen. And then, this is very critical. Power. Power to overcome. Amen. Um, I remember Apostle Paul. He was saying, I think it's Romans 7. He said, the things I want to do, I find myself unable to do it. I'm struggling. But you see, when you are walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, those things, you won't struggle. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 11 says, And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, that is, we're talking about walking in the Holy Spirit. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you as you walk in the Holy Spirit, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Amen. Amen. So in other words, the same spirit that raised Christ up, living in you, he will lift you up. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. In other words, your body will not shut down on you. Your body will not die. He will give you life. I said he will give you life in the name of Jesus Christ. And the beauty of it, I'm telling you this, is that even in the place of warfare, God gives you victory as well. Because what greater warfare can you, can you explain when um, um, the body of Christ dead in the grave and the devil was pressing, in fact they had snatched his soul to hell but Jesus came, I mean God came in the Holy Spirit said give me back that, <laughs> that <laughs> collected his spirit, put it back in the body, brought him back to life praise God, so this is warfare that we go through when you walk in the Holy Spirit, every warfare that you go through in life God causes you to have victory. Amen. Do you know, have you, do you experience any warfare? Do you have any witness here? Have you experienced warfare before? Amen. Some people are, they're not there. Ah, I've seen warfare. Yes. Different. I shared about my own one time. This one, I'm still, I'm still perplexed at what happened. I went to an all-night prayer. I came. I had a small office then in Lagos. Honestly, I don't know what the staff of that people, in the, the, those staff that I hired, that I was paying, did. I don't know. I just walked. It was, it was, in, it was even before the business started to open. I mean, because, uh, uh, it was a Saturday morning. I went for all-night prayer on Friday. Stepped into the office. I just went blind. Couldn't see anything. Everything was white. How? And I'm a young man. <laughs> it's not like as if I've done anything. My eyes have not even seen much. Eyes are supposed to last me 90 years. I was still in my 20s. Maybe early 30s. I don't know. It's not done to a third of his work. Blind. I now felt my way to the wall. I said, Satan, you are a liar. Face the wall. Started to pray, pray, pray. After about one hour, maybe going to two hours, sight came back. Warfare. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you, as a believer, you will face warfare. <laughs> Pastor, this is why, you know, the one telling us a story about somebody that came to church and they were casting out demons. You know, they're casting out demons, casting out demons. The woman sat down, she didn't do anything. Then some people accidentally came in. They were dressed like Halloween uh, people. Everybody scattered in church. And then as they walked towards the woman, she just said to them, 
she be, if you are the devil, she be you were here when they were casting you out. I didn't participate, though. I didn't dance. Look at me just sitting down, jelly. Je- je- <laughs> I was not a troublemaker. <laughs> just leave me alone. <laughs> Amen. The funny thing is that it's those people that the devil like. The devil is so wicked, even his own worshippers. Why do the dev- demon worshippers, why are they so compliant? It's only God's worshippers that, that, what's the word? We take liberty with God. So, ah, he's a God of love. You forget he's also a consuming fire. But the devil, he's so wicked that the first person he will torment is his high priest and all his worshippers. That's why if you choose by mistake to say, I want to be on the devil's side, you better be prim and proper. Because the guy has, he has no slack. He will be beating up everybody, including his worshippers. He doesn't know whether <laughs> you are a believer or not. He's wicked. So that's why it's better to just serve God. Don't be on that side. Amen. Amen. And what must you do? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Tell your neighbor, be filled. Life will take the Spirit out of you. We're talking about walking in the Holy Spirit. You must always be filled. See, life, you know, um, Jesus told the parable. He said, a sower sowed the seed, right? He said, some fell among thorns and it couldn't grow, right? What were the thorns? Issues of life. Struggles in life. Are you following me? So, struggles of life will take the spirit out of you. You will not be able to sleep at night. You will be weak, tired always. Somebody is oppressing you in the office or your business. You know, there are some businesses like that. Everything is against you. Makes you weak. Hallelujah. The answer is to be filled. Be filled always, always, always. Because there's daily life will deplete the spirit. But as you are being filled, amen, then you overcome. Then you are looking, you are looking for the devil and say, Satan, where are you now? Let me see you. Let me, let me deal with you squarely. Are you still here with me? That's not, when you are filled, you don't look for pastor. When you are filled, you, the devil shows up in your house, you tell him to get out, and he listens to you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. God is good. And all the time. All right. Um, ah, because of my time. Let me, let, let's just say one or two things about what you must do. Number one, pray and worship. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are worshipping always. Those are keys to being filled. Amen. Um, Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 to 18 tells us to put on the armor of God. Amen. How many of you know the armor of God? Have you heard about the armor of God? Okay, let let me put it like this. Have you ever seen a soldier go to war? Seen them in some movies. How do they dress? They're fully equipped, armed to the teeth. <laughs> Amen. The <laughs> Bible describes the armor. It says the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, breastplate of righteousness, the, 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 the girdle of truth, and shoes in preparation for the gospel. Amen. And there's no armor for the back. Why? Because God doesn't expect you to turn your back to the enemy. You face him head on and you get victory. Hallelujah. Put on the full armor of God. And then in verse 17, you know, uh, verse 18 says, praying always. You know, stand it and then pray always and you get the victory. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So in conclusion, I just want you to know that God made a promise, he fulfilled his promise. The spirit is available to you. How do you maintain it? Pray and praise, and always be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
final scripture. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. It says, for the spirit of God, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. The spirit God gave us is not what? It's not a spirit of timidity. It's not a spirit that will keep you silent, quiet. I can't talk. I'm afraid always. In the church, when we say, come and do this, come and uh, um, be in the prayer group, ah, you always tell me, no! That's not the spirit that God gave you. The spirit of boldness. Amen. Amen. Guess who, who, who demonstrated boldness after receiving the Holy Spirit in, on the day of Pentecost? Peter was number one. Amen. Time wouldn't permit it, but almost all the disciples, as they were being scattered, they were doing a lot of things. Praise God. Signs were following them. Amen. Because timidity was not their portion. Let's rise to our feet. Hallelujah. It's time for you to walk in that Holy Spirit, to be victorious, to be on top and never beneath. To put the devil in his place. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you still with me? There are things you are going through right now. And you are thinking, God, who should I talk to? What should I do? You have it inside of you. Be bold. Tell your neighbor, be bold. Wait for your neighbor to tell you too to be bold. <laughs> be bold. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All right, let's pray. I want you to talk to God that from today you will walk in the Holy Spirit. That you will never be timid, you will not be afraid, you will not fail, you will be ahead always in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Libro Shkatali Karaba Shantolia. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We'll bless your name forever and ever. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, for the Spirit. Spirit of boldness, say, Lord, spirit of love, spirit of a sound mind. Lord, your spirit does so much for us, we can't even count it. Your spirit gives us wisdom. Your spirit gives us guidance. Lord God Almighty, help us to be sensitive. Lord God Almighty, some of us have, are experiencing challenges in our life. By the power of the Holy Spirit, God turns things around for your sake. In the name of Jesus, Ah, you're trusting God for a new job. Listen to me. It's the Holy Spirit that will lead you. We've got testimonies. They went to the right place. God, God went with them. God spoke through them. And they got those jobs. They got the businesses. Father, please go ahead of me. As we enter into this new season, Lord, demonstrate your greatness in my life. In the name of Jesus. Father, oh God, Lord, the more than ever before, let me walk in the power of this Holy Spirit. Let my life change for good. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we talked about the need for service. Father, oh God, every opportunity give me, let me serve. I want to serve. I want to do more for you. In the name of our Lord Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise, Lord. Glory, honor, majesty be to your name forever and ever. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I just, for those of you who couldn't join us on Friday, let's take only one prayer point, and that is sudden in, uh, divine intervention. Sudden divine intervention. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know how challenging life is. I don't know what you're trusting God for. But you need, if you need sudden divine intervention, I want you to put it to God. I say, Father, I put this situation into your hands. Lord God Almighty, and I need sudden, sudden intervention to finish my project. Sudden intervention to heal me. Sudden intervention to break through. Sudden intervention to pass my exam. Sudden intervention to get the job. Sudden intervention, oh God, Lord, to meet the right person. Sudden intervention. In the name of Jesus. Lebro no so teke lebo shantolia. Reka santoleke lebro shkato.
in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Father God, Lord, I'm putting my challenges, I'm putting my situation, I'm putting my job, I'm putting my finances. Uh, open the heavens, uh, open the heavens. Uh, Lord, I'm, I'm speaking within the grace of the Holy Spirit today. Lord, I'm asking, oh God, Lord, that you will fill me up again. Continue to fill me up, oh God, uh, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Uh, in Jesus name we have prayed that Acts chapter 6 you know the apostles they, they, they needed deacons and those who will serve they said listen we cannot be serving in, uh, tables and doing uh, a lot of work in church we need reliable people we need reliable people filled with the Holy Spirit so that we will do what we will give ourselves to prayer and the word Come, come, come and try. See what you can do. That doesn't matter. I just got to sit out there. Amen. Sudden intervention. Hallelujah. We will give ourselves to prayer and the word. Have you given yourself to prayer and the word? That's the key. Pray one more time and just say, Father God, in this new season, Help me, oh God, to recognize the place of the word in my life. Lord, just to read, read the word. To read the word, to study the word. To pray when it's convenient, when it's not convenient. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. We we'll bless your name, oh God. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let's pray. And so, eternal Father, thank you. What an amazing day. What a great service. We want to thank you for your word. Service started in a beautiful way and it's ending in an awesome manner. Lord, we ask that you draw us closer to yourself. Lord, because we are entering this new season, Father, resolve any difficulty in the life of your children. Lord, many of us have brought our burdens here. Let us not go back with it. Change our life for the better. Lord, open the windows of heaven on earth. Upon every single one of us. By the time we come back next week for Thanksgiving, let us have testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise. Your children have prayed. They've brought their situations. They've spoken to you. Father, you have heard their voices. Father, please answer everyone according to how they have prayed. This new week as we go, let us go in your power. Go ahead of us. Lead us, O oh God. The Holy Spirit is so important in our lives. We ask, Lord, that you will, you know, the Holy Spirit will manifest himself in each of our lives in the name of Jesus. And Jesus said, if God knows, I mean, if, if people know how to give good gifts to children, how much more you will give us a good gift in the Holy Spirit. Father, give us unto overflowing this good gift of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. So that we will walk continuously with it. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, testimonies will pour forth. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And everybody say it very loud. Hallelujah. You know, because of our time, and I think there are one or two quick meetings that we're going to do, I would have loved us to take some session of worship. But instead of that, I just want us to, you know, just say something nice to God, to wave. And then after, the princesses, you know, you're going to wait behind. Uh, Mommy Pastor is going to uh, meet with you for a brief meeting. Just wait behind here. Uh, all women, all women. Sorry? Please? All women. Yeah, all women, please. You know, uh, mom pastor is going to meet with you. You know, so I want you to stay and, you know, have this uh, uh, brief meeting. Uh, our first timers, uh, Pastor Deswa, please wave your hand. <laughs> Amen. Please, our first timers, please see her very briefly. And then you can come here, come back if you're a woman. And uh, have you been blessed today? All right, let me know um, those who are filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, you're going to be with us on Wednesday. Amen. <laughs> Show me by hands. Let the Holy Spirit move your hand up. So <laughs> yes, I see you. God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Now, here's the thing. If you don't have the link or you don't know where the Zoom is, 
just come to me. Or even uh, uh, Pastor Francis here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he will forward the link to you. Amen. But make sure, so that this Wednesday to Friday, let us catch fire. Are you with me? And you will see how June, Ju June will be a walkover for somebody. I didn't hear your amen. You want June to be a walkover, Abby? Make sure you are in Biazo for this Wednesday to Friday. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. And just say something nice to God by waving. And just say, Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, because I know you are empowering me also. Thank you, eternal Savior. We love you from the bottom of my heart. We give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Love of God. And sweet Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Three powerful hallelujahs for the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. That is for God the Father. Number two, praise the Lord. God the Son. Now, for God the Holy Spirit that we've been talking about for the last one hour. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Have a great week ahead in